Jennifer Lewer, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-L-I-E-W-E-R, and I'm a spokesperson with Maricopa County Elections. Today we are testing the accuracy of the machines that will be counting ballots for the jurisdictional election that Litchfield Park and the City of Tempe will be having on March 12th. Essentially, this is our ability to demonstrate for those cities and for the public that the machines are programmed accurately. Therefore, when we are running ballots through the machines, we're able to ensure that we are getting accurate results. One of the unique things we did here today was we actually did what happens to certain ballots when they come in. Sometimes people might spill coffee on their ballot. Sometimes they may draw in the corner or doodle. Sometimes they may get stuck with another ballot. So we actually essentially create recreated these mistakes that can occur and we put those into our tabulation machines we wanted to ensure that the ballots would get flagged if there were other issues with them if a ballot can't be read properly it comes out a different slot in the machine those ballots are then taken over to what we call an adjudication board and this is a bipartisan team of a republican and a democrat who will look at the ballot they will identify what the voters intent was um, and they will recreate the ballot. There is a ballot duplication process. So once they can ensure that they understand what the voter's intent is, that ballot is duplicated to have those exact same votes, and then it is able to be run through the machine. We wanna ensure that the community has the ability to see what it is that goes into elections. Um, having faith in our election system is so critical, and we wanna be transparent to the public, and give them the ability to see how their um, ballots will be counted because everybody that works in this building, we are committed to ensuring that we have not accurate and safe elections. And this is just part of the process. Throughout the election and in the next 60 days, we will have members of both political parties who are here, who are observing processes. We have uh, extreme security measures to ensure that only the people who are supposed to have access to the ballot tabulators have that access. And we want to encourage anybody that might have questions about the elections process to go to maricopa.vote. I will say for this upcoming year, we have invested significant resources um, based on the last elections. We have purchased um, ballot on demand printers that are able to sustain um, the use that is needed on election day. We have purchased more high-speed tabulators, as you can see behind me, um, to try to speed up the counting of, of ballots. People often say, it takes so long to count ballots. Um, we're actually tabulated them faster than ever, but our races are tight, our races are close, and so the media is hesitant to call those races until every ballot has been counted. And so what we wanna to try to do is ensure that that process is efficient as possible. Um, doing things like this, um, in the past, we do have 24 seven live streaming of our facilities, um, but we wanted to make it more personal. And so we were able to live stream from inside the room when we did the logic and accuracy test. Maricopa County voters can have faith in the election system. It's a complex and um, somewhat complicated process, but we have a lot of backups built into the system. So if one thing happens to go wrong, we have what we call a redundancy to ensure that we have a backup plan for that. Um, we hire thousands of election workers, you know, and we're all human and, and mistakes get made, but there are backup systems in place through audit trails, um, through hand counts to ensure that what happens is that every legal vote that should be counted is counted. So with the logic and accuracy test, which happens both before an election and it actually occurs after the election to make sure the machines haven't been changed, they, they begin by checking the counters on the machines to make sure that they're at zero, zero, zero. And then um, participants will actually go and they will use our accessible machines. So these are for folks who might have a, a disability, whether it's a site um, or even those who might be colorblind, who want to have a different contrast. We have accessible voting machines, and so votes are tabulated on those machines, and then they take those ballots and we run them through our tabulators. These are high-speed tabulators that, if nothing else was going on, could actually run 8,000 ballots an hour. Um, but we have other processes in place. We have redundancies. We check with paperwork. We make sure that the counters are correct. 
And so during an election, it can be anywhere between 2,500 to 4,500 ballots that will actually be um, processing. Once those ballots are processed, then the machine, um, then we head over to adjudication. And so any of the ballots that didn't go through, then they go and they go to um, a ballot duplication board. They're duplicated. Uh, and, it, and we already know the results of the election that we were holding in there. So then we compare what were the results of what the tabulators told us to what we knew the results would be. And those two things have to match. Today we specifically tested machines that are programmed for the jurisdictional election. And two of those machines are um, flagged for that election. The other, let me look real quick. I think one, two, three, four, okay. The other six machines that are behind me will be used for the presidential preference election. We'll be doing this process again uh, one week from tomorrow to ensure that those six tabulators are accurate and ready to count votes for the presidential preference election, which is on March 19th. And the presidential preference election, people need to know it is a closed primary, so only registered Republicans and Democrats will be able to participate in that election. Um, and we look forward to hopefully seeing everybody back here a week from tomorrow. So we do these at a certain timeline in the election calendar. And so the jurisdictional election is March 12th and the presidential preference is March 19th. So they're a week apart. So we are doing the logic and accuracy test for each of those elections a week apart as well. I think it's critical folks can log on to beballotready.vote. They can find out what their um, party registration is. They can check and make sure their address is correct. And they can find locations when vote centers do open to be able to see where the closest vote center is. Thank you. Excellent.